with the stocksquish.com. We do try to start on time. We do try to end on time. With that, it's exactly 4.30 Eastern time. Let us begin. Percussion drummers, are you ready? All right, and now please cue the trumpets. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter today. Please welcome Melissa Amor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you, Online Trader Central. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. For those of you that have never heard of me, I trade the U.S. market. I trade stocks. So I do day trades and also option trades. Today we're going to talk about how you can earn $1,000 a day trading, and this is using my strategy, which we will discuss today as well. If you would like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can go to my Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube and like me there, and you can also feel free to call me at 929-3200-GAP if you have any questions. Okay, so let's get started. Oops. Hold on. This little PowerPoint just... It just locked up. Hold on, I have to click on and off. Ugh, it just froze. Wait, there we go. <laughs> Can you see it now? It froze for a minute. Okay, we're good. Excellent. All right, does everybody see the slide here? It says picture which side of the picture fits you best successful people or unsuccessful people do you see that here you know what i'm going to do it, it's going to happen again because both of the the hot con is touching my powerpoint and i don't have time to have kathy fix it so just hang on i'm going to minimize the screen here because it's going to happen another time if i don't do that but i'll still be able to see questions okay that that should do it anyways which side of the picture fits you best we have two slides, successful people on the left and then unsuccessful people. And I'll leave this up here a minute so you could look at this. This is actually very interesting. Uh, one of the things that I find interesting about this in reference to trading, because this is a general looking at successful or looking at unsuccessful, a lot of people, and again, I talk to a lot of traders, okay? Um, have some of these qualities that are in the unsuccessful people list and 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 i thought well that's interesting what do i mean what might some of those qualities be fear change in other words doing a strategy they've been doing for a while and it doesn't work and they're losing and they're afraid to change it or learn something new or spend money to take a class like mine to learn something new what else Blame others for their failures. Sometimes people want to blame the stock or the market or whatever if they don't make money in a trade. Say they keep a journal but don't, okay? Again, this is, you know, important to track your results when you're trading. Here's another one. Think they know it all. This is not a good quality uh, for traders. It's always good to learn stuff, okay? And down here is another one too don't know what they want to be very important do you really want to be a full-time trader or do or you just want to like half-assing it okay and then that last one down here never sets goals you do have to set goals and we're going to talk about goals today all right and specifically you know if your goal is to make a thousand dollars a day we will discuss that in the trades today so obviously you want to be over here with the successful people someone that continuously learns someone that sets goals and develops life plans, you know, keeps a journal once others succeed, keep, keeps all of these things that I'm talking about when I teach about being organized, okay? And accept responsibility for their failures. You know, when I take a trade, it's my fault if it doesn't work. It just doesn't, you know? And I don't have anyone else to blame because I'm running my trading room, I'm doing my trades, and if something doesn't work, it's it, it doesn't, okay? So this is very, very important to think about. And you can be honest with yourself. You don't have to tell me or say anything, but I think this is important. And, and usually people are a combination of some of these, but the qualities over here of the successful people is what you want to have, okay? So keep that in mind as we go along. 
So would you consider yourself successful or unsuccessful as a trader? Or basically even more than that, a person in life. Meaning that you have friends, a family, money in the bank, a career that you enjoy. You sleep good at night. You're not a worried person. You're healthy. Okay. So think about these things. What sets the two apart from successful to unsuccessful? And, and again, we're talking mostly here today about trading. And that list was important. You can go back and look at it. A lot of it has to do with expectations versus goals. First of all, I'm a very goal-oriented person. Very, very goal-oriented. I have goals for myself. Um, sometimes I have very high goals for myself, but I do set goals for myself in everything I do. I might even have a goal like what I want to get done in a weekend. Okay, that's, that's really like my personality. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I have goals for myself, for my trading, for my business, and then I have also personal goals. So your goals may be financial, but they also may be personal goals too. What I've found now, since I've had the business for the last four and a half years, I've been teaching people, if you have expectations, which many traders do, you will often be let down. And what happens is then if your expectations are that you're let down, you feel bad, you feel disappointed, you feel in that in unsuccessful people portion on this right-hand side. You feel like unsuccessful if you don't meet the expectations you have for yourself and then you judge and criticize yourself, okay? Because we usually judge and criticize ourselves more than others. So having goals is much, much better. So if your goal is $1,000 a day, that's good. And we'll talk about how to get you there. But having the expectation is not good. When you set a goal for yourself and achieve it, you feel good. This has a lot to do with your mental state. And it is important to feel good in your life and in your trading so you can continue to move forward and do something with your life and be successful. When you set a goal and don't achieve it, though, you feel bad. Okay. If you want to reach your highest potential, it's important to distinguish the difference between the two, expectations versus goals. So what are some examples and how can you accomplish this in your, in your trading? A great example is what we're gonna talk about today. If your expectation is you wanna make $1,000 a day and you don't make it, you're gonna feel like crap. Be mad, criticize yourself, criticize others, whatever. If your goal is to make $1,000 a day, then write down a plan of action how you're gonna achieve it because you may not be able to do that right now, today, or tomorrow. Why? Why might you not be able to make $1,000 a day today or tomorrow? A, you may not have a good strategy, but B, even if you learn my system and learn how to do it, you may not have the size account to be able to take the trades to make the money. Or you may not have the money management skills, okay? Or you might have some negative things in your head about past experiences you've had in the market. Or you may not understand sizing or whatever, whoever, whatever it is. So, for example, if you have a $2,500 proprietary day trading account, which you could have with $25,000 in buying power, if your expectation is to make $1,000 a day and you don't achieve it, you're going to feel, get, feel bad. But your goal could be to make $1,000 a day. But how are you going to build that account up so that you can take the risk so that you can make the money you want? Is, is what I'm saying making sense? So I had a student that was here for some training uh, for the last few weeks. He left. I have a different student here this week. It's like night and day, the two difference of the students. But the student that was here last week, I gave the student a goal. Get your account up to this amount of money. Once you have it to that amount of money, which means you wouldn't be able to take any money out unless you want to, if you want to get it up quick, or you have to, or you would take longer to give it up, taking out your profits. Get your account up to a certain amount so that you can risk a certain amount so that you can make your goal going forward, okay? Instead of swinging for the fences, for the expectations. So th this is really, really important to think about the difference between these. Now, I've been updating this for the last few webinars, putting the trades that I've called in the room in the last few weeks, and I have the ones, the current ones out at the end of the webinar, but it's been averaging around 80 some percent. Some weeks I did the webinars, it was 81, some it was 84, some it was 80 something. I always tell people it's over 70% to be conservative. But my system in the last six weeks, I've only been tracking it for six weeks really to put it out in webinars and I'm eventually gonna get it on the website, has had an 81% win ratio. What does that mean? That means you should expect to win in eight of every 10 trades. 
that is a high win ratio. And if you've been trading in the room with me, you should be at that place, and many people are. And the new people are just learning, and so some are on a demo. But this is what you should expect if you come with me. You can have a goal to set that up for yourself. Okay, well, if I want to make this much money, and I know that 8 out of every 10 trades or 7 out of every 10 trades works, then, therefore, I'm going to risk this much to make this much. So you kind of have to back it off, knowing what your goals are. Looking at it like that, instead of doing something and feeling bad that you can't make the money that you want to make right now if your account size isn't going to give it, whether that's the buying power, whether it's the amount you can risk. And when we go through the trades today, we are going to talk about buying power because I've had some questions lately about this, and I really think that Many, many people don't understand the difference between day trading and investing because some of the some of the trades here, and even today the examples are some of the, were some expensive stocks. Cost was one, Costco we'll go over today, and even BBY, which was over $42 a, a strike. Some of these stocks are not cheap. Now, I trade things anywhere from, you know, $5 could be up to 100 bucks. Costco was expensive. That's not normal for the room, but... I would say the range of most of the stocks that I trade or call in the room, even for options or day trades, are between five bucks and $65, okay? And we will talk about this as we go along because positions, when you take a day trade, really, you should be trading with margin. Now, any questions so far as we're going along? The point I'm trying to make, though, is that making money trading is real. Your goals are real. And it is okay to have goals, and it's good to have goals, but make sure it's what you have in your mind is not an expectation instead of a goal. So this is where the nitty-gritty comes about. And I'm not going to lie to you and say it isn't hard for people because I can hear it in people's voice. I can tell it is. People want to be there where they want to be right now, yesterday, with trading. And gosh knows, some of you have been trying to make it, make money in the market for years, probably longer than I've even been trading, which has been about eight years. But the fact is, you have to take it seriously. Part of the seriousness is investing your time and commitment into learning something and getting good, whether it's taking a class like mine or going through the process. And part of the taking seriously is sometimes to set the goals and know that you may not be able to do exactly what you want and risk the amount of money you want right now today because you may not have it available. I had a uh, person, uh, he's not a trader, he didn't do the class, he's saving, but he, Saw a video I have on YouTube where the student that was here made $1,800 in four minutes last week. It was in the BBY trade, and we'll go over that. Anyways, the person wants to make $2,000 a day. I say, okay, great. The person has $2,000 to open up an account. That is a ridiculous expectation. It's not that you can't make $2,000 a day trading. Of course you can, but not with a $2,000 account. Okay. So that person has to set goals for themselves now. In order to achieve that, if his goal is to make $2,000 a day, then that's what he has to do. And that is means taking it seriously. And also part of this means not believing kind of some of the crazy stuff. And I know because I'm on a lot of email lists of places too that say, you know, turning $500 into hundred grand in like two months. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy things out there. And I'm not saying that people can't hit the lotto per se, or the jackpot, which is what it would be if you took a tiny, tiny risk and made, you know, 100 grand in a trade or, you know, 30 grand in a trade taking like a $200 risk. I'm not saying things like that don't happen in the market. A anything is possible. But that is not a consistent way to trade to think that you could make an exorbitant amount of money risking a tiny, tiny, small amount over and over and over again. So part of the seriousness of it is looking at what reality is, which is that you have to work hard and you have to learn something in order you, and you have to set goals. And setting goals is actually a good thing, okay? It means you're, you have a plan. It's okay if you achieve your goals in six months or one year. The problem is when you have expectations and you don't achieve them right away, is you start to feel bad and you want to give up. And then guess what? You want to go do a different thing and a different thing and a different thing and a different thing and a different thing. And I, I find this over and over again when I talk to people. You've got to ha be serious about what you're doing. So following a high probability system combined with money management is taking it seriously. And what I do every morning is I go through my system, which is a checklist. It's a 26 point rating checklist. And if you did my class, you would learn this, the, the checklist and you would go through the points. And again, like I said, I tell people 70% high probability. It's over 81% for the last few weeks as I've been tracking the trades. 
the money management is important too. What does that mean? It means when you're up, you get out, okay? You get out when you're up. So my system is called the Golden Gap System, and it finds and spots institutional money in a stock so you know how to trade it and when and in what direction. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, and it creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. So when you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. Are people selling it? Are people buying it today? Okay. For example, the market could have fallen harder today. It didn't. Guess what? The market actually held today. I can't say I'm, I was surprised because all in all, the market is very, very bullish, but the market could have fallen today. And guess what? It didn't. The bulls are in control of this market, and it looks like there's no letting up. So anyways, if you want to be on the side of you know, where you're going to make the money, you want to be on the side of the power. Who's buying it? You want to be long if the stock is getting bought, and you want to be short something if the stock is selling off. And institutional money, what I mean by that is banks, hedge funds, and they're, they're in charge. And you will learn how to read that in my class. So it is really about becoming an expert. And every trader on every level must learn how to do whatever strategy they're going to do and become good at it. And actually, becoming good should be your goal. The money is a goal. We can't, we can't deny that. Again, I can't deny that for myself. When I take trades, I have a, a certain amount that my goal is. I usually look at it per week or per month. But the fact is that being good is also a goal, okay? And that has, was always a goal for me. And, and I was able to achieve that. So I'm good at gaps. I'm good at really reading charts when they gap and predicting where the stock will go. And that's what you will come and learn from me. And it is something that is applicable to day trades, options, swing trades, and you can use it for ETFs or stocks. When you understand how to read a chart and you also believe in yourself and you know that you're really good at something, when you have to take a loss on a day, maybe even two losses on a day, you won't feel badly about yourself that you didn't meet your goal that day. You will know that you will meet your goal the next day or the next day or the next day. In fact, I say that very often in the room. If we have a bad day and somebody doesn't work, I say, you know what? Tomorrow, market's going to give it to me. It will. And then it often does, okay? Because I have a positive and optimistic attitude. I have an attitude of a successful person, like we talked about at the chart at the beginning, okay? Now, this is a great, great example. This is Target of conviction, being an expert, knowing something, having being good is the goal, and institutional money on top of that. This chart is, I could do a whole class on Target, okay? Now, what happened here? This was a loss for the room, for the day trade, it failed. But the stock rated well per my system, but it was a loss, okay? And guess what? I knew that the chart would break. It did. It did the next day, and it really broke full on today. So very often when I, have a, when I have a gap in my system that rates per my 26 point system that doesn't work right as a day trade, very often they fall through in the longer term trend. So you could take it as a swing trade or an option. So I call this as an option after the day trade failed. But if you did this as a day trade, as a short, you lost. But it was a good gap. Many traders out there, again, would look at this and think that this was a long and that the failure of the stock to follow through short on the day meant that the stock would rally, rally, go over the high and rally and fill the gap. That is a ridiculous, absurd thing and the improper way to read a chart because institutional money sold this gap and it was in charge of the chart. It's just all that happened. And the reason that it didn't follow through in the day here as a day trade short is because no more sellers came in on this day. They sold off into the gap. This is the people in charge. They waited, and then they sold off more after. And sometimes it happens, okay? But you never lose conviction in what you do if you know you have a high probability system. And if you don't meet your goal on this day, you say, you know what? I'm going to meet my goal doing it as a swing trade, doing it as an option trade, okay? And we'll go over that more. But let's look at this. I really squished this together. This is the chart going back since 2011 of Target. This is TGT. I think you can put the ticker symbol in the room. You can pull it up in your own charts. I just want to show you here where this gap, it's so small here, but you can see it. This was the gap that happened back in here. Crap, I forget the date. It was the 28th. It was February 28th, okay? So it had earnings and the stock gap down. And I want to show you the overall chart of this, okay? 
It's a beautiful chart, okay? It's not going to fill this gap in here. Now, this doesn't mean that it won't ever, ever, ever fill it, but it ain't going to happen anytime soon, people, okay? So, again, there is no such thing as a gap fill, as a strategy to do that is playing who's in charge of the movement of this, which is the money. That's what I'm really talking about because that's what moves stocks. It's being sold off. The whys or wheres or hows or twos or whatever, I don't care about. If that's meaningful to you, you can listen to the earnings calls, you can read up online, you can do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, what I do is rate the gap and analyze the gap and look at the chart. And I'm very good at predicting this. This was a great, great call, okay? To know that the chart would break and know that it would so soon without even rallying, okay? So how am I able to do this? Doing one thing over and over, becoming good, being an expert. This has to be part of your goal as well. As I said earlier, besides the monetary goals you set for yourself, you have to have a goal for yourself that you're going to learn how to read charts right. Once you get that down, the world is yours. It's only as much as you're willing to risk that will be able to cap your income that you can make in trades. And we all have different levels of amounts of money we're risking. A lot of that has to do with our available cash. You know, what our expenses are, who we're responsible for, a spouse or siblings or, or parents or kids, okay? Or mortgages or car payments. But ultimately, the sky's the limit for you once you get good at something and learn how to do it. So like I said, my system is called Golden Gaps. Now for those of you that don't know what a gap is, I'm gonna go over this here in very uh, basic, basic terms, even though I've been talking about gaps, I'm just gonna review it. What is a gap? This is all that I do, okay? I don't do any other strategy at all. A stock gap, so when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading, a gap is a break in price action for one day to the next. There are bullish gaps and there are bearish gaps. It just so happens that I like to do the bearish gaps because I like to short. I like to short because sell-offs, sell selling action happens quickly in stocks faster than buying action, okay? Now to look at this here, again, what is a gap? It's the difference between the close and the open. So four o'clock target closed up here at around 66, whatever. This was the night before on the 27th. In the morning, boom, gap down here to 57 something. So it gapped down, I don't know, $8 plus overnight. So you could rate it with my system. How do I find them? I can find them on a scanner. You can find them anywhere. You can go onto Yahoo Finance, wherever you want. Gaps happen all the time. There's stuff, stuff's gapping tonight. Stuff's gapping tomorrow morning, okay? But this is a gap. It closed here and open here. It could have closed here and open here. It could have closed here and open here. It could have closed here and open here. Could have gapped up. You could have rated it to go long. I'm always doing the gap in the direction of the gap. So in other words, when I saw that this wasn't gonna work and, the st and it stopped out, boom, I was off of it. I'm not buying this. And as you see, that would have been ludicrous because it didn't follow through higher. And people that did go long here, thinking it was a gap fill for a swing trade, guess what? They had to exit their position. They were down today, or yesterday even, on the Friday. And that's what helps this move as well, people. Besides the fact that it's really being sold off by institutions. So do you see here how people are were down? And there were traders who do this kind of stupid stuff. It doesn't work. You're looking at this whole thing here when you're rating the gap in the morning with me, and that's what helps you predict it, okay? So it's easy to see now, but it, it's hard if you don't know what to do or what to look at. And I'm sure that even people in the room, because we took a loss on that one that day, you know, wonder, gosh, people probably didn't do the put, but the fact is that it was lower, okay? In fact, Eric said, oh, you know, I saw it rallying. He's a student here this week, and then he didn't do the put. But do you see it worked? It was a really good trade. All right. So gaps have huge opportunity because they spot money. The directional bias of where the money's taking it, up or down, and you play it with that, and that's how you're going to make money. Now here was another one. What is this? This is a gap. This actually had two gaps last week. You could have played it in both directions, which is crazy. Again, I prefer to short. BBY closed here. Boom. Gap down. You could rate it. This one did not have the follow through lower. The day after the short, which worked perfectly, it gapped up and rallied. Anyways, this was the short in the day. As you know, I like to short, it worked out well. So what happened with this one? This is a one minute chart. 
The stock closed here, gap down. Open, boom, short it. You're in. Get the drop. So how do you make $1,000 a day? You take enough size in this to get a move in this between 9.30 and 10 that you can get a move that will go to pay you. So, for example, if you're looking for a 50 cent move, you take what? 2,000 shares is 1,000 bucks. If you get a dollar move in something, you take 1,000 shares, it's 1,000 bucks. But you don't get a dollar move in everything. And also, some things you don't want to hold to get the whole dollar move. So I think 50 cents is a good average. Again, you have to be able to afford to take the position. But if you shorted this here, here was the stop, boom, you got the move. The short price was 42.60. Risk, this is an advanced risk, okay? 3,000 shares or 1,200 bucks. Profit, this is at the first target, which was $42, even though it went past this, so I think by like 20 cents, you could have made $1,800. Again, beautiful trade. You're in it, boom, you're out. That's it, done, okay? This was last week on March 1st. So Target didn't work on the 28th as a day trade. BBY worked as a short day trade on this day. Target was the put then, the next day too on this, as a short to the downside. And actually, uh, I remember now, the Target was up in this immediately on this day here. It was up like 20 cents into the option on the second day. So you see how you, you put together these kind of uh, movements by really focusing in on the gap, one directional bias, with which I prefer to short, like I said, getting in quickly, getting out quickly, and taking the size. And if you can't afford to take the size right now, then you have a goal that you're going to. And while you're going through the process of learning, you're building your account, all right? And this does not have to take, like I said, months. It could be a few weeks, so you build it up. Any questions from anyone? Now, this was going back here. I'm gonna show you the loss in the target. This was last week too. Target closed, boom, boom, dropped, okay? This didn't work as a short on the day. As I explained earlier, what happened? It wasn't crazy when it flipped out. And, and it was interesting because the stock opened and rallied and it set up and it was boom, boom, boom. If you were short it, you were up a little bit, but not a lot to get out. I think I think one or two people got out of the room here. Anyways, it looked good. It looked good. It looked good. It looked good. You're up still in here, and it's getting late, and it's 10 o'clock, and you're up, but it's getting late, and you're not out yet, and you could have gotten out here if you lost patience, but anyways, here it stopped out. Anywhere you had to stop here, it got you out. So this was a loser. So you, if you had risked an advanced risk, 2,000 shares, you would have lost the full amount. You would have lost 1,100 bucks, okay? And you just would have stopped. It's okay to take one trade and take a loss. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, again, as I was talking about your money management, your money management could be that you take one trade a day, win or lose, that's it. And you do the options when I call them, and that's it. And when you're up, you get out of them, done, okay? The law of probabilities for my system is well over 70%. How You learn my system and you got to combine it with good money management. I use stops for day trains and the rule for the options is when you're down half on them, you kill them. And you can throw that money into something else that's working. For example, if you were in something else, there wasn't anything else going on right now in the options besides the target call. But if you had been in something else, you know, you could have, you could have, uh, you know, gotten out of it if it wasn't working and threw the money into target. So you, you play hard the trades that are working as day trades or option trades or swing trades. And you kill the ones that aren't, or you take the stops to the ones that don't go right away in the morning. So the money management is just simple, but implementing it is something that you have to have written down um, in order to make the money. Any questions so far about anything anyone's saying? Let me know. Now, the next one here was Costco. This was a wonderful, wonderful move that the stock had today, which is very interesting because the short in the room was Friday. It had the earnings, and I didn't call an option in it, and I should have. I should have. I was so busy Friday because the student was here till 5 o'clock, and then I have another student here today, so I never really got around to calling or doing an option in this, and this, this had the move. 
the biggest move in Costco was today, and, and it gapped down today as well. So you could have rated the gap today. You could have played it today as a day trade. You could have played it as an option today. You could have played it as an option on Friday. It worked Friday as a day trade. We're going to go over it. But do you see here how there's so many different ways you can play it? When the gap rate's good and it sets up and works, you can do it in every way that you can. And that's why if you don't have even the time, if your goal is to be a full-time trader, but you have a full-time job right now and you can't be in the trading room and day trade every day, Monday through Friday, then learn the system, apply it to swing trades, apply it to options. If your goal is to get an account up to 25 grand or to you know, cut back your hours or change your schedule, then make a goal. Do the options trades. You're sitting on the sidelines, you're not making any money at all. And all these things are just collapsing. I mean, look at this. So far, so good? Okay, Kathy. Anyways, let's look at the Costco. So Costco ran up here, gapped down. This is a short, I'll go over the day trade here. It gapped down again today and had a monster move. And who knows, I didn't even see where this closed today. This may even be lower still, okay? This fell today in the market rally, so this really is weak. So you see here you had the follow through. I will tell you though the chart in Costco is still long. It is a bullish stock, it's still in the uptrend, but she could have played this for a quick move on Friday and today. And it, you might have another quick move in it this week. I didn't really look to see how it closes. If we have time, we can tonight or I can do a video tomorrow. So let's look at the day trades. Closed here, gap down, boom. Open, rally, two, short it, drop. Some people got out here. Really, I felt that the target was 170. It did take a long time to get there. Anyways, the stock rallied back, held, 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 dropped, broke, broke the low. Again, this took a little while, but it worked. It did go to the target. It broke it a little bit. Target was 170, and you could have gotten out. $1.40 was the move, okay? And if you had risked an advanced risk of 1200 bucks, your profit would have been $1,680. Now, what, again, if you can't afford to risk $1,200, then risk $600. If you risk $600 or half this and took 750 shares, you would have made 800 bucks. There's nothing wrong with 800 bucks. You did have to hold this a little bit longer. The entry was still in the morning and it just took a while to go. But do you see here how this then really broke today? Again, the reigning system tells you you go with the Golden Gap rating system. It tells you how to play it. And there were people here in the morning in this, and we saw it. We saw it in the room because it took a while to go. They bought it over the high. They bought it in here. They bought it in the support on the daily chart. And they even tried to buy it in here because the stock took a long, 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 long time until it finally pushed down. But it did because the people with it and were in charge of it. And again, this isn't, the chart isn't broken in the long-term pattern. But, the, but this today, on the day of the gap, which was Friday, and also today for the gap down, the control was to the downside. And if you're trying to go long something like this into support, you're losing, you're losing money, okay? Any questions about this Costco? It was, it was a really, I just have so much going on. I should have called an option trade in this for everyone and just, you know, the last two days have been really busy for me with students. But, you know, you learn how to do this, you can do them on your own. You could, you could almost do everything that we do, like I said, as a long, as a, as the next day down. Any questions from anyone so far about these trades? So what do I do? I find gaps in the morning. I rate them using my checklist. I qualify them. I don't trade them unless I've rated the gap. The checklist tells you what to do. Either you short it or you go long it or you don't do anything. And it tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. It, it's how I could see that something like Target would break and even Costco too, that they weren't longs to do in the day as day trades for longer term and how you can make money actually following something and playing it through. So it's all in the checklist. This tells you everything you need to know. And like I said, if you don't have the time to day trade, you can apply it for overnights or options. Some people love doing the options. Some of them are very volatile. I've called some really profitable options and things like Google and Amazon and BABA in 2016. They don't all move as volatile as some of those high flyers. Like Target just moved into the strike and passed the strike. The strike was 57, so it was, you know, 100% profit turnaround. But you do get ones that there's so much time value built in that you can really, really make a lot of money on them. It's all in the gap, though. That's how I find everything. And it's not about doing gap fills, and I know many people look at things like that, and it's not about buying something into support, and I know people things look like that. 
it's not that simple. If it was, it'd be very easy to read a gap. And I'm not saying it's hard to read a gap, but I'm saying you definitely have to know what to look for. And if you don't, you're probably looking at the wrong thing. I'm predicting where the momentum is going to come into the stock and in what direction. The volume, the momentum, and all you have to do is take the trade in the right direction when you do and you can get it. Sometimes when I'm doing these things, it looks like I'm shorting in the air. Costco is a great example here. This looks like you're just shorting in the air if you look at the daily chart. You know, and, but here is the trade. So it's the daily chart that really is telling me what's going on. Where is it going to go? What's it going to do? And where is it going next? Okay, you can wait till the stop does something and then take it, but your entry is going to be late. You'll basically be scalping it and you won't be able to make, you know, good risk to reward trades, which not everyone that we do is a huge risk to reward, but some can really be big. Uh, you know, I think Target actually probably continues for another day after I saw how it closed, and Costco might even too. Okay? So my rating system pinpoints the direction the money's moving, and this is how you can make money. You can make $1,000 a day trading. You've got to be able to take the size, and more than that, you have to be very focused on the strategy itself and knowing that the gap rate's good. You will have days where the, the trades don't work. So the money manager comes into play that you either decide to stop with one loss, or you can give yourself two trades in the day because the second trade you may be able to make back the loss from the first trade and still profit. There's days that I do that in the room or call it in the room. Some days though, there's not anything other to look at and we just stop. But I think you gotta know before in the morning, before the pre-market what you're doing. It's really about doing it every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, you got to be there every day if you want to achieve these goals because there may be some days, like I said, where you take a loss and there may be other days when there isn't any trades to do. You need to know that your goal is to do the gaps or rate 20 points or more, get good at them, seeing the setups, rating the gaps, having the monetary goals for yourself for what you want to achieve, and you maybe have a, a mini goal right now until you get to that goal. So your goal is to get the account up to this much, for example. So until you do, you're going to risk this much and you back it off, okay? Does everyone understand? Now going back to what I was talking about earlier at the beginning, having expectations is not good. It is one of the biggest things that I think traders struggle with. Traders have huge expectations. Traders have the most unrealistic expectations of any people I've ever talked to in life. It's very unusual. I don't know why. It's true that you can make a lot of money trading, but you do have to know what to do. And a lot of people don't, okay? You have to know what to do, and you have to have at least a good amount of money behind you if you want to have very lofty goals, like $1,000 a day or $2,000 a day. You, you really, really um, have to be focused on getting good. And the goal is what you should focus on, not the expectation. You don't want to allow yourself to feel let down or that you're not doing well because that critical mode, that mode of judgment, when you're judging and judging, you're judging yourself and putting yourself down, makes you think negative about yourself, the market and what you're doing. And how your brain works is then that you'll, you'll, make, you'll start to make really bad decisions. You'll, you'll, you'll almost be working against yourself. You'll be working against yourself, creating experiences and making poor decisions then because you're, you're, you're not thinking positively or optimistically, you're thinking negatively, okay? It's really easy to trade and press the button when you know what to look for. I mean, there's, there's days that I do it. It's, it's instinctual now for me because I've been doing it for eight years. And like I said, I had a person here in the last few weeks. You know, it's just instinctual where I can tell, take it, take more. It's going right there. Boom. Okay. I can tell. I don't know what day that was last week. I don't know if it was Thursday or Friday that that target was going to go. And the trader that was here, I said, just, you know, you can take more if you want. And then it broke. And he made uh, money on that trade today. I think he made $1,600 on the target. The same guy that made $1,800 on the BBY. So, you know, it's just when you see it. And I'm good at just seeing the way those prices go when the stock is moving, when the stock, when the candlesticks are moving and the level tube is moving because I'm so used to watching gaps move. I'm, wa I'm used to watching selling action. And that's what I like to watch. It's what I like to trade. And, and I have a lot of conviction in what I do because I'm doing it for a while. And even a day 
when we suck it all up and something doesn't work like Target, I never lose conviction in my system and then I get proven immediately around the next day that it worked because the stock broke, sold off the next day, held the high of the gap and fell, okay? So you've got to have conviction in a system that you are utilizing to make money in the market. If you're doing something now and you're not making money and you don't have conviction in it, my suggestion is for you to stop. And, and whether you learn my system or someone else's, you've got to learn something that works and you have to learn something that has a pri high probability ratio of working because there will be days where you're going to have to take a loss. And it's really nobody's fault. You might feel like you want to blame yourself, but it's not your fault, the system's fault. It's the, it's the nature of the market. It's the nature of the beast. Not everybody wins all the time. Even great, great, amazing traders who make millions of dollars have to take losses sometimes. And that's where the money manager comes into place as well. So, you know, I find that as I talk to people in the years go by, one of the things that really, really does stick out that I do so differently is that I only do one strategy. It's, I mean, it's really, really funny. There's just so many trading educational companies out there that teach a broad base of everything and some of them do teach gaps but they're nowhere near as good at reading gaps as me because this is all that I do you only have to do one thing to make money in fact you only have to take one trade a day to make money but you got to get it right you got to get it right okay so if there's five things in the morning and they all rate good you can do all five if you want but you only need one you need one to do it one to make the money one to plop it on to make size it's it's kind of like falling in love. You only need one love of your life. You only need one spouse, okay? To fulfill you and to be fulfilled and happy and in love. You only need one trade, one gap, one good one every day. That's all that you need. This trading all day, this taking multiple, multiple, multiple trades, it's a nightmare. And I don't, I don't teach like that. I don't trade like that. So one of the things I do that's very different is I'm very focused and I don't, trade all day and I don't over trade and we are focused on usually one stock pick or two a day we do one trade and if that works we stop okay so having a system you can use in multiple time frames it gives you an edge because you'll get good at it by doing it over the course of weeks and months and years I mean you know doing the same thing over and over again is like playing an instrument you get good over time now here was the option trade in this it broke today again I still think this could continue another day seeing how it closed but if you took an advanced risk of this, for example, if you risked, if you, the price of the option was around 60 cents when I called it, it was a 57 puts, it went through the strike. If you took 50 contracts or 5,000 shares and risked three grand, because that's what it would have been, okay? And if your exit was $1.20, okay? Guess what? You could have made $3,000. Either way, if you'd risk 2,000, you would have made 2,000. If you risk 1,000, you would have made 1,000. This was a average mean price of this today. It actually went up to 135 something, I think, at one point. It was, and, it, and like I said, I think it keeps going. Once you're through the strike, which I don't, I didn't remember the exact price of the close in here, but the strike is 57. It's every, all this in here is you're up a dollar plus the time value. Now, this was out through March 17th, so you got a, a couple of days this week and next week left too. So this could go to 55 very easily. And then you would be $2 in the money. Again, you know, money management is either get out the whole thing today though or half because you're up so much and you can ride the rest down. You can always retake these as well. You can always get out and if it sets up again, you can get back in for a bigger target. I do believe this is probably going to around 50 bucks. I don't know when yet. We'll see how it acts tomorrow, but $50 is in sight for Target. I don't even know if it bounces till it gets there, okay? And guess what? Someone will buy it at 50. People will buy it. They will buy it at 50. In fact, where was that thing here? I think I have time to go back. Where was that big chart? Here. Where's the 50? Here's 50. I don't know if it goes straight there. But I can tell you people are going to buy it at 50. It's a, it's a terrible buy there. But people are going to buy it. So I'm predicting it's going to go there. And I'm predicting people will buy it there. And I'm also predicting it's a terrible buy. <laughs> but the timing of that I can't tell right now. But I could tell that the timing would be that it would break here in, in the two and a half weeks I called the trade of the option. And it did. Okay. Now, here was the trade results for the last six weeks. Maybe it's even seven weeks now. I've lost track. I'll just put these all up 
and we'll go over the ones, um, any questions we have here while I keep this up. Does anyone have any questions while I just have these results up? These are results to the last few weeks, and then today was only Monday. It was 31 trains. There were some days that the room was closed or there were no trains, and six losers. Does anyone have questions for me? We have a few minutes here. It's, it's really about having the earning power versus just having money. If you had no knowledge of how to trade and a hundred grand, guess what? You have money, but no earning power because you wouldn't know what the heck to do with that hundred grand. You'd probably lose it all trading. I don't know how long it would take you to lose it. Depends how much size you would risk, but I guarantee you, you wouldn't lose it in the market if you didn't know what to do. If you have two grand or three grand or five grand, not what you would consider a lot of money to take a lot of size, but you had, let's say, five grand, and you know what to do and how to trade. You can take that five grand and make it 10. You could take 10 grand, then and make it 20. That's the earning power. The earning power is in the knowledge. This was a long time ago, but this was, it was before I started the business. There was a broker. He ran a prop place, and he said, I'm going to stick two grand in an account for you, Melissa, and I want to see if you can not lose the two grand and make money doing it. He had me on a tight leash, um, and I, I made money. I had one losing day in a month. It was stressful because I was used to trading size, but it was like an interesting experiment for a month to see how tight I could trade. Every, literally every move I got out quick, and I did push it with the size a little bit, and then I did have one losing day. In fact, I think the, the losing day I had was a little bit too much. It was like 700 some, almost 800 bucks, but I did great the rest of the month. And I ended up tripling the account. So it, it, was a, it was an interesting experiment. So I took two grand and made it six. But it was hard to trade with being on that tide of a leech, but I did it. So you, you, I had the knowledge. I had the knowledge. And, and I think that, that when you know how to trade, no matter how much money you have, you will be able to achieve your goals. It, depending on what they are, and how much money you have and how much knowledge to start out with will depend on the time it takes for you to achieve those goals. But if you have, you know, expectations instead of goals, you will let yourself down a lot and you will not feel good about yourself. And, and when you have a losing day, then you'll feel crappy or want to give up or you want to critique yourself or criticize or be in judgment. So it is very important to have the knowledge. That's the power. The power is in the knowledge. And that's what I give you in the class. And that's why the class is $5,000. Because once you know how to trade, no one can take it away from you. No one will ever be able to take away from me the skill that I have reading gaps. And it will last forever. And over time, my skill has become even better. I mean, my skill has become so honed in now that I see things that I can't even communicate intellectually to people. And that's one of the reasons they're in the room and they like getting my calls because I see things that I can't even explain just from experience of doing this for now for eight years. So it's a benefit of being in the room with me. But having the knowledge means you're going to do it right. You're going to learn it. You'll learn the system from me instead of getting lucky. Because anybody can make money with dumb luck in the market. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a system that teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. You can use it for longs or shorts, but I prefer to short. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. And like I said, I do it in the one-minute chart. So you're in and you're out quickly. The course also teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level, and you will learn this from me in the class. You'll, lead, you'll learn the one strategy. It's how to trade gaps effectively, reading who's in charge of the power, like where the target was to the downside. You will learn how to read support and resistance so you don't get in the wrong direction, so you don't buy a stock when you should be shorting it. You will learn a more proficient and advanced way to read charts, which is through the gap analysis. Okay, not just reading support and resistance or moving averages or Fibonacci's by focusing on the technical analysis in the gap and the gap itself. Okay, and you will learn how to get conviction in your trading with the market as a source of wealth because all you have to do is have one day where something impossible happens like target and then you start to believe and you really see that, oh my gosh, this works. Or you have a huge day profit wise or you make, you know, $1,800 in four minutes. I mean, 
those kinds of things that happen to my students is what really gives people the conviction to follow me and do it and to stick with it. And if you're not feeling like that about something you're doing now, then you're probably doing something that doesn't work. So the benefit of training my system in GAPS is that they set up quickly. Whether you hold them or not is up to you. Also, you can be anywhere in the world and do it from home, okay? And I chunk it out. That's how you meet your goals. And there's some days, like I said, where you could start the day out with a loser and take a second trade to come back. Some people may not feel that they can do that. You know, I really know what I'm doing. I know how to trade. If, you're, if you don't want to do that, then you stop on the one day and you take the loss. But it really is about putting together a full-on month when you're going forward. And I have a 100% conviction in what I do and what I teach. And, and that's why I've been doing it for so long. And I love it. Does anyone have any other questions here? Now, the one last thing I want to talk about is we talked about expectation goals. And the last thing is potential. The potential is that once your goals are achieved, you can have the life you want. And guess what? You'll probably have different goals then too. And they may be financial. They may be different. They may be something else. I was talking to a person actually earlier today. This is a, this is a friend. And she said, um, gosh, what made us talk about this? I don't know how we got in the subject. We were talking about if, if you had, you know, $500 million in the bank or whatever, would you keep working or something? And we were talking about another person. Uh, I was an example or something. I don't know if it was somebody on TV or where. We were like, oh, if you have $500 million in the bank, do you think that person would stop working? And I said, no, I don't think that person would stop working. Because once you start making a lot of money, your, your goals increase. Your, your desires increase and then you want to keep going and you want to learn a certain lifestyle, live a certain lifestyle and you get used to it. Now, again, some people just may want to make money and retire early. But the interesting thing is that you won't know your potential until you've created the life that you want and then you can decide. Then the decision is up to you. What is the life you want? Maybe you don't really want to work. You want to retire early. You only want to work and trade a half an hour a day or an hour a day. You don't need to make $1,000 a day to survive. 500 bucks a day will be good for you and quit your job. Or maybe you want to live a luxurious lifestyle, have two homes, fancy cars. Everything is based on what you want as a person and what everybody wants is different. So you'll never see your, be able to see your true potential if you're stuck in the judgment and the criticism and the expectations and you can't achieve your goals. So set your goals accordingly so that you can achieve your full potential and you may not even know what that is. I mean, many people don't know what that is. They just go through life kind of like uh, through life and never really conceive or think or be goal oriented. I'm very goal oriented. In fact, I was saying something, I'll say this one last thing, everybody go. I was saying something to somebody the other day on the phone and as I was saying it, I was like, well, I was like, well if this happens, but it was so weird. And when it spit out of my mouth, I knew that I wasn't, didn't believe that at all. I knew that it was going to happen. It's a goal that I have for myself. And I was trying to have a normal conversation with a person. So, so I was saying, well, if this happens, but I know that it will happen. But I'm, because I talk as if things usually in my mind are in the present time as if they've already occurred. If I have a goal, I talk as if it has already occurred. And that's why if I'm not there yet, in reality, it doesn't bother me think about what I'm saying. Now, let's talk about the class. The class is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. That's what I love. Retakes are free. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. I'm doing a class on a Monday, on a Sunday and a Monday. For those of you that have Saturday conflicts, either work or religious conflicts, do this class because I usually only do them on Saturdays and Sundays. I might do two classes a year on an off day, on a weekday, like a Sunday and a Monday. So it's timing all the same, nine to five, cost is $49.99. And this is going to be good because the Monday the market's open and we'll do live gap ratings and that will help people a lot. Okay. I'm also going to give the options letter free through July 4th if you sign up for the class this week by Friday. Okay. And so you would get calls like Target. And I'm working on getting a system of text alerts set up that people would get the um, trades texted to them. Right now, they're just getting them on the emails. <clears throat> Any questions? Also, if you want to learn the trends course, it's for longer term trend trades to read longer term trends like in the cost because the cost is not in a downtrend, even though it had the two day move. 
You can sign up for both of these and get 50% off the Trends class, and it's $56.99, and here's the dates for these. Does anyone have questions on anything? This is a testimonial from a new student. This was actually from February. It was Chinchilla. Chinchilla! Chinchilla has two chinchillas, which is really funny. They're for his kids. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions? Quite a group tonight. So the point is that you got to believe in yourself if you want to get things done. Don't have the expectations, have the goals. And if you'd like a free trial to the room this week, you can email me. Email me at info at stockswish.com or melissa at stockswish.com. And if you want to sign up for the gap class here for these dates, then email me or if you want the special. Again, it is Sunday and Monday. Any questions about anything? Quiet group tonight. You people got to get some life into you. It's only Monday. <laughs> Everybody's tired from the weekend. You're welcome. Listen, it should be an interesting week. There's some big names on the board. We'll see what we get tomorrow. And thanks for having me, everyone. Email me also if you have questions on the class. Okie doke. All right, good job, everyone. Thank you, Online Trader Central. Have a good night.